And welcome to the celebrated nightly news of Calaveras County. My name is John, and I have a special guest with us here tonight. Now, our special guest correspondent is Granger Hamilton. How are you tonight? Good. Hey, thanks for joining us. Um, now, his mother's not still not feeling real well tonight, so this is our weekend entertainment edition where we're going to tell you about what's going on upcoming for this weekend, a little bit of stuff on local news today. And also, we brought Granger on because we're going to talk a lot about Bear Valley. Now, this is now they opened last weekend, but this is kind of the real first weekend because they got new snow. They have the the whole the. Um, and did you look on there today that the entire front side of the mountain is open? the The entire upper mountain is open to open now. There cool. is available now. So. Um, <coughs> That means anything, a little bit of start, um, starting this that we just noticed that available today, so for this weekend, they will have the entire upper mountain with the exception of uh, the lower mountain and Grizzly will be open. So Polar cool. Express, all the other stuff, so the full mountain will be open. By this weekend? This weekend. It's looking that way. Uh, Bear Valley Snowmobile, they opened to full operations uh, day before yesterday. Uh, Bear Valley Cross Country opens to full operations tomorrow, so it's going to be a first big weekend. Uh, now we're going to get to young Mr. Grange here in about five minutes or so. We're going to do a little bit on uh, local news to start that we started off today um, with. Is this morning we started off attending a Calaveras County Planning Commission meeting uh, this morning over in um, San Andreas. Now this today's <coughs> today's Planning Commission meeting was the it was the last. Planning Commission meeting attended by and presided over by by retiring Planning Director Bob Selman, um, and he was in a, the title on the topic today was the item on the agenda today was transfer densities. Now this is one of the things to where in the lake, primarily in the Lake Tulloch area and some other areas as well. They um, they were allowing density transfers from land that was actually underneath the water level to uh, properties that were above, and they passed a <coughs> text amendment that would be going forward and passed on to the supervisors today that would be outlawing the practice of um, density transfers. Now, what are your thoughts on density transfers? I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no so idea. anyway, but also today was really the swan song for uh, Bob Selman. And down here towards the end, uh, there were some really nice touching pieces um, from the commissioners talking to Bob. Um, and it was... Um, and he has served his county well and he served his county through some turbulent times as well in those departments uh... we'd like to wish bob the best and it was an interesting little here and we have a little photo that we took afterwards and here is and we go let's see where's our full screen here there we go and here on your left hand side John Taylor retiring Mr. Bob Selman in the middle and Janice Elliott County Council uh, right there on the, your uh, right side of the screen and this is um, and this was Bob's official last last meeting to preside over so uh, we wish him well and he has uh, always been a gentleman always um, done his best and like I said is he always kept his calm under some very trying conditions and uh, thank you for your service to the county Bob and we wish you well in your retirement um, <clears throat> and the other interesting thing is it came out of this and we were talking to um, Calaveras County Council of Governments Tim McSorley he stopped by the COG meeting and we talked to him after the um, and we talked to him after the meeting and one of the things that Oh, let's see. One of the things is coming up is on the funding for the Angels Camp Bypass. Um, as many of you know, this is something that's been on the topic. Uh, let me pull my notes up here. And the good news is, is there's fo about 4.4 million of the Angels Camp by the 60 some million dollar project that is coming from this fund that the the bond related fund that the um, that the state did put a freeze on now the the other thing on that and there's some there's some silver linings to this and the fact that 
um, it's the pooled money investment um, fund, and it's the, the board that made the decision to halt some of the um, spending out of this fund because they were afraid they were going to run the county coffers dry, or the state coffers dry. Um, the interesting thing on this is they may have already spent this money because this project has been ahead of schedule, ahead of timeline, so in fact it may not have much impact on the Angels Camp bypass at all. Um, and the other thing is there's still not a, an actual mechanism in place to actually shut down these projects yet. It's, there is a real problem that the state may be running out of money, but the other little interesting issue on this is there may be some brinksmanship or p political angles to this as well to just, uh, by doing this, it does signify to the legislature that yes, we have a very real problem in California. Um, right? Don't you yes. think? Okay. All right. Very good. Now, um, <clears throat> the other one is, is there's a four projects in Calaveras County that are on the list. They are two Cal Fire projects. One is the uh, new fire station at the Al for the Altaville Maloney's station there. That one's going to get backed off. And the other one was the multi-purpose room at Bret Hart High School. We talked to um, District Superintendent Michael Cimenti this morning as well. And they're still going to go forward on planning on this one. They're going to plan. They hope and, uh, that this will get a um, worked out by the time that it gets closer to starting to break ground. And interesting on this. So that's a little bit on the highlights of local news um, today. There was some some minor little um, traffic accidents, um, those type of things that you would normally have on a run of data basis. No serious injuries. And one last little thing we wanted to play, if we can pull it up here, is tonight, just about an hour ago, we spent some time at Michelson. Now, Michelson Elementary was holding a Christmas program tonight. And we'll run through a couple of these clips. And this was, uh, they had a whole Broadway theme. It was pretty, pretty cool. We'll have the uh, video up on the site later. They did a very nice job. This is the Michelson Elementary School. And um, they had, some of them had the, the 50s show tune stuff. We had the 50s flapper stuff going on, some more of the classic stuff. So it was, they did a very nice job. And it was, it was very, it was kind of adorable. Very nice. All right, now <clears throat> on to our weekend issue. A couple things that are going on, and one of the things we, we'd like to show you, and we'll come back and talk a little bit after this. This runs about 10 minutes. This is an interview we did with Bear Valley Cross Country's Paul Peterson. For those of you who don't know, Paul Peterson has been in Bear Valley for 34 years, kind of one of the one of the pillars of the Bear Valley community. He runs Bear, he with his wife and staff run Bear Valley Cross Country. Uh, they operate it has one of the largest trail systems anywhere in the U.S. Um, they also do sledding um, and everything else. And we talked to him for a few minutes about what's coming for this season and why you may want to do it. So we're going to send you to that clip with Paul, and then after we get back, we'll talk about our weekend stuff. And it should be a, a fun one. Here we go. Good afternoon. My name is John with the Pine Tree. I have the great pleasure of being here with one of the Bear Valley. You feel like a fixture here, aren't you? Paul Peterson, Bear Valley Cross Country. John, <laughs> nice to be with you. I've been called uh, chairs, uh, hood ornaments, and now I'm a fixture. That's good. Now, how many years have you been up here? Well, this will be my 34th winter. 34th. And 33 years of teaching both cross country skiing and an outline scheme. Wow. So, love it here. Oh, yeah. Now, as many of you know who watch this, the, uh, the mountain opened uh, this weekend. Now, next weekend, you guys should be ready to roll. Huh? Isn't that the... Well, yesterday we woke up to an inch of snow yeah. on top of meadow grass and right. cow pies, right. and now uh, we're up to about a foot, right. and we're expecting another foot tonight, mm -hmm. so it's dry, light snow, so that's not ideal for early season, right. so we're going to need three, maybe four feet of this dry, light snow to get all our facilities open, yeah. but uh, we should have some ski trails open on Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday, we'll have, you know, everything going to the meadow cafe. Right. Uh, Reynolds, lessons, all that stuff. It's Christmas. We gotta yeah, be open. You gotta be open. Now, I know your name's Bear Valley Cross Country, but you guys, in some ways, are a lot more than that. I mean, you have. I mean, you not only do you have the store here and everything else, but you do. You know, the, there's all kinds of stuff you guys do, isn't it? Is it? Well, there's four main 
uh, activities that we yeah. focus on here, and then we help people get to all the other activities. Right. You just stop by, you want to do something right. other than what we're talking about, we'll give you maps, information, mm -hmm. brochures, we'll right. get you on your way. We're at the entrance of our valley, so yeah. it's a uh, perfect place. We've got a little visitor information center mm -hmm. outside, mm -hmm. a lot of local knowledge just being here for so long. So, But the four activities that we focus on are cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, right. sledding, and tubing. Uh, and, and those are our two newest activities. Uh, we've had sledding quite some time. We had a two year, two years ago, and that's been a hit, uh, especially with Cottage Spring shutting down. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. loves yeah. the tubing. And that's, I mean, those two things, the sledding and the tubing, they've really, they've, that's been a nice piece of your business. I mean, isn't it developed into that? Is that? Well, our whole theme is kind of affordable winter recreation. Right. And, and uh, number one, sledding is just great family activity, uh, regardless of how much it costs. We charge $10 for a sled that we rent you right. and uh, a nice room, sledding environment, and uh, that, you know, is kind of where it, where it starts. It becomes affordable, tubing's 15, we go on to cross country skiing and snowshoeing, it's a little more right. than that with rentals and a trail fee. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been... It's been a fun addition because when your employees take their kids out there, right. you know you got a big right. <laughs> now, you know, let's see, is, is people, is, like myself, I'm in my mid-40s. Now, I've put on a couple pounds over the years, and I need to drop a few this year. Now, what's some of the things, is there, I mean, cross country. this is good exercise stuff. I mean, it's, what's, what would you recommend for some of the, you know, you may got a creaky knee or something like that. You know, what's some of the, the... Well, cross-country skiing is, is, number one, it's easy, particularly in, in the environment that we right. have out there with a large meadows and groomed trails. Uh, and it, it kind of gets bad rap sometimes. Oh, that's a lot of work. And, <laughs> and you're uh, just fully fit, you know, cross-country runners and, and cyclists, they go, oh, that's a lot of work. And, and the activity level is just like walking. You can go as fast as you want, and you can dial it down, dial it up. I guess a technical question with the, with the groom trails and the tracks. I mean, is it is it an easier learning curve? I mean, is it fairly easy learning curve to do it as far as? Uh, well, imagine learning how to downhill ski right in the powder. That, right, you, that probably wouldn't hard. go well. Yeah, it wouldn't and, go and well. So it's yeah. a similar situation. You know, there's backcountry skiing, going out skiing wild snow. Mm -hmm. You need to be at at least an intermediate level of skier, preferably advanced, to enjoy that. Right. So a lot of people that take their friends backcountry skiing because they're a good skier, they want to introduce their friends, they get sandbagged and they skiing right. poor snow conditions and they have a bad time. And, and we've lost a lot of people that have had that experience with the tracks. It's it's virtually guaranteed that everybody can do it, and they can pick and choose how difficult the terrain you want to ski based on you know, green, blue, black, and right. like right. right. uh, so. yeah, You guys actually have one of the largest I mean, systems on the, the entire West Coast, don't you? Isn't this one of the? Well, it's, it's really one of the largest in the country. Uh, That's okay. So it's it's large, but. More than that, it's it's just quality. Right. We have right. quality Alpine ski area, the snowboard center, and we have a, a equal and, and you know sort of world class type cross country facility. So we're really fortunate to have this in the you know yeah. Highway Four area to have such great facilities, snow clubs, uh, very favorable top resorts. It's way better than a lot of them, and you know. Reputation is among the best in the nation. Now, you were a, a world-class, you know, you still are an athlete. You've got some pretty good some caliber level of on your teaching and you know, staff. Is that fair? Is it? Yeah. Well, I've had the, the good fortune of, of being involved with the national team for 12 years and track the other national team when you to teach here. Yeah. And, uh, part of my role with that is to train our instructor staff on the mm -hmm. World class lessons. Mm -hmm. So we've got a great large fleet of certified instructors and uh, passionate about it. They're good at it. They make it fun, they make it easy. Right. Uh, they're real you know, uh, empathetic with different people's learning styles and stuff. And so, yeah, that is another uh, cylinder that we've got to be part of. Yeah. Is really because you guys, I mean, just the expert. I mean, you have the, yeah. And now, I guess a little bit about the equipment. Now, what is some of the, I know if people aren't been following it for a couple of years, what's some of the, 
put some of the exciting stuff now as far as well, like downhill skis, mm -hmm. you can see these things are only taller than head height. Uh, yeah, the skis have gotten shorter, so yeah. they're easy to turn and stop. So they don't have to be the you know the old. It used to be you measure them with your hand over your head, and you know your upstretched right. thumb. Right. So I'm five ten. I'm skiing on a two o five, and now I'm skiing on a one eight. Wow. And uh, so you know what a lot of people struggled with with cross country skiing is like you'd be on a two fifteen. Try and make a snow plow with that, and then you throw that into a nice little turn, maybe a little parallel action. A little degree of difficulty. Very right? difficult. <laughs> so, not only have the skis got shorter, but the boots have gotten taller. They are now, you know, got hinge plastic cuffs and ankle support, things like that, that really have added to the control. So just what do people want? They don't want to fall down. Right. So, this is stuff that's being improved and technology has fallen down a whole bunch less. Than yeah. Which yeah. you used to have to do on, yeah. on the older gear. So we rent that gear. We, okay. We, uh, you know, make it easy to you know, check that out. Right. Uh, right. And then if, you know, if it's good, you want to purchase. We're, uh, you know, very cool. Cross country gear is hard to find. I yeah. Think we got the only shop between here and Modesto. So, uh, you know, crack staff and uh, oh, yeah. uh, lots of gear. Very you can nice. see behind us. All the good stuff. And, uh, no, the, the gear improvement's been fun. You know, it, the snowshoeing part is coming to part of a decent part of your business. Is, I mean, is, that, is that really, you know, what, tell us a little bit about that stuff. Well, you know, snowshoeing, uh, aka winter hiking, right. has gotten really popular. And uh, these green trails basically uh, are an option. It's, it's uh, when, to go in backcountry snow, if it's deep, it, it really, uh, creates a lot of work for right. snowshoeing. Right. Uh, so then days like that, it's nice to come out where it's been packed down right. and, uh, and it's easy. So the shoes have gotten really lightweight oh, yeah. and so you don't feel like you They're have a smaller. Huh? I mean, it's a trash can lids on your yeah. Yeah. They are smaller and uh, with the groom snow situation going on in groom trails, you can go with a really Got small it. shoe. Got it. Because it's not having a you don't float need platform as much. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going out in the backcountry, you're still going to need the big shoe. Right. Big platform. A little slower pace, a little more hiking. Might use your ski poles for that. Mm -hmm. Down poles mm -hmm. work or uh, some adjustable ones or whatever. And uh, no, I it just, it's grown popular. People, it, you know, Maybe you have some mobility issues, right. you got a knee replacement, right. Uh, right. great at golf but not so good at skiing. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. kinds of folks have, have really been attracted to the snowshoeing thing. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's funny if you don't have a pair, you know, put it on your Christmas list. Put a pair on the Christmas you know, list. Still and, and you have plenty here, right? Well, yeah. I got them, yeah. <laughs> Those are available elsewhere, but uh, yeah. So what were you going to ask me about? No, we were going to talk about you're going to do some other stuff new this year, like horse-drawn stuff, like historic, well... Yeah, <laughs> just when we thought we knew about uh, all the fun stuff, we could we pull another uh, yeah. horse out of our hands. Yes, that's of course. So we partnered with Horse and Barrel and Altitude Catering, and really, it's their event. Right. Uh, the Horse and Barrel guys have got this awesome uh, sleigh, and they have a horse, so it's the one horse open sleigh. Very nice. And with the Altitude Catering uh, component, we're going to have a deal where families and kids can uh, take a sleigh ride, go to a bonfire. Very nice. Santa Claus. Very nice. A little bit of a marshmallow roasting. Oh, wonderful. And then some nice appetizers and things like that. So that's this Saturday and Sunday afternoon. This coming Saturday yes. and Sunday? Yes. Okay. And All right. Okay. Uh, it's our first crack at it. We, uh, we have um, high hopes for just oh, yeah. nothing but a great time. Yeah. And, um, if, if you get a good response, is that something you could conceivably do a little more of? Is that something that they think they would like to, like is almost a recurring thing? Well, it, you know, it's every special event start like we do the Moonlight Ski right. Tour years ago. Yeah. And then, wow, that was pretty special. We need to do some more of those. Yeah. So, uh, we're hoping that, that that might turn into that. Very nice. The horse is going to spend the night down the hill, out of the cold, and come back up the next day. Uh, the sleigh will probably stick. So you're not going to make them pull a grooming sled or anything at night, just to... Uh, no, the, the horses, <laughs> uh, I've seen that done in China, but <laughs> oh, we don't do that here. Uh, we've got better technology. <laughs> better technology. Yeah. 
Well, thank you. You know, it, we really appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. Now, is, I guess the last little bit is what, to summarize, if, if I mean, we know that people think about alpine skiing, they know what that is, but just as this, I mean, you guys do a lot of stuff here, so the four things, or what should they remember? Well, it, you know, it just all starts with sliding on snow, and there you and go. You can do that with the sledding, yeah. uh, which is open daily, we can, and check with us to, to yeah. know when that yeah. starts. But, do you need uh, like three feet? Isn't that yeah, the, it, it probably won't start this weekend. Yeah. So we got the yeah. sledding, and then that's daily, then we have the tubing on the weekends and holidays, then every day we have the snowshoeing and cross-country skiing. Uh, we also grant, you know, telemark ski gear if right. you want to get into that uh, as a sort of Nordic type activity. Mm -hmm. And then if you just come up here and want to know how to have a good time and need a little direction, uh, we've got that as well. So thank you. You bet. Thanks for having me. Thanks. And we're back. We hope you enjoyed that. Now, did that get everybody uh, ready to just go out and go skiing? Cross country? Not me. Sledding? I don't know how to. Well, you're going to learn. I will. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, touch a little bit on this weekend. Now, on the calendar, it is a fairly busy calendar, but it actually it's starting to slow down a little bit as we get closer to Christmas. Tonight, I think, was the last school program uh, as we head into the uh, Christmas holidays. And also, coming up tomorrow, the, on Friday, the 16th Annual Affordable Gifts Art Show and Open House continues at 6 p.m. tomorrow night at the World Market Mercantile in downtown Angels Camp. We have the family karaoke. Are you going to do karaoke? No. No, you're not? Oh, okay. Uh, Disney's 101 Dalmatian starts tomorrow night, and it may have actually started... No, I think tonight was the, new, the first night on that one. Um... <clears throat> Now, this is a live musical theater performance, December 19th, 7 p.m., December 20, 7 p.m., and December 21st at 2 p.m. And this is the um, this is the very nice 101 Disney's, Disney's production for the kids. It's a Disney program, but it's a kid's production of the 101 Dalmatians. Go see it. Now, a little bit on more of our winter sports ish, winter sports stuff. Uh, and one of the things Granger, we had Granger to talk about. Now, <coughs> we'll just look at the Bear Valley snow report here. Bear Valley has had 50 inches in the last seven days. They're going to get more tonight, I believe. Now, what this will do is the entire front side of the mountain is available, and the entire 100% of the back side is now available, which means that the lifts available for this weekend will be Panda, Super Cub, Kuma, Cub, Koala, Bear, Pooh, Polar Express, which basically means you got the entire mountain, it, with the exception of Grizzly for the lower mountain. Typically that takes about six feet of snow. Um, they usually like a little bit of a wet base in with some of the powder to kind of to build the base. And the only interesting thing that's been really good that we've had a lot of powder. The only bad thing about it a little bit is that um, it doesn't pack real well because it's powder. Now, now starting this weekend is one of the reasons we had Granger on tonight. Is he is on the this will be his second year on the little on the Bear Valley ski team, correct? Now, don't they start a? What do they do? Do they have a? Now tell me your, about your next couple weeks coming up. What do you guys do? We go nonstop skiing from basically eight o'clock in the morning till about four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, every day for two weeks starting tomorrow basically and until January now and what then are you getting we skip Christmas that's it oh so every day except Christmas yes. but you'll probably ski Christmas anyway maybe maybe <laughs> now what are you getting ready for the race in Bear Valley now when's now the Bear Valley now this now what series you're in what's called what the Central Series yes all right now that is which ski resorts um, Dodge Ridge, Sierra Summit, Badger Pass, Bear Valley. Um, is that it? Is that it? I, I think, think it may be. Now, the first race of that series is held at, Do held at Bear, right? Yeah. So that's the Bear Valley Slalom? And then Dodge. Okay, that's the Bear Valley Slalom, and that's and on then, what, the 7th of January? Yeah, and then the Dodge GS. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're getting ready for that. So that's uh, so you got to start training for that? Mm-hmm. Now, how many local kids are on it with you? One. 
one. <laughs> there, now, used, there used to be two, but then one quit. <laughs> now there's more than that. There's like Justice Rasmussen. He's oh, a. Oh yeah. Okay, then there he is. Hasn't been um, this year. It, well, he's been, but he's still on the team and racing there. So then oh, you I'm have. Sorry. Um, Other group. Sawyer Alford. Well, that's one kid. Okay, Damn. and then you have uh, the kids from the Sonora side, right? But that's not local. Okay. All right. Well, there could be more, but it's a very good team. It's a very interesting thing is we are fortunate to have right here in our own backyard basically the best weekend program on the West Coast. The only way you can beat this program is if you go to like an academy like Squaw or Sugar, right? Right? Yeah. So if you want your kids to ski, if you want them to really learn how to do it well and everything else, the uh, Devo and the uh, sports programs at Bear Valley are an affordable and actually a pretty wonderful way for the kids to do it, right? Mm hmm Okay. Now, you going to do well this year? I hope. Podium every weekend? There's not a race every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure here. Okay, a little bit more of the fun stuff up there. Bear Valley Snowmobile, we mentioned they... Um, opened up full blast to their full blast the roads are closed in bear valley now it is the only place where you can actually rent snowmobiles without a guide anywhere in northern california so you can just rent snowmobiles and wander on um, also coming up now at bear valley cross country they will be opening everything um, everything starting tomorrow morning but also one of the things is they're doing is they're having a Santa's horse and sleigh. Uh, Kim and I, we talked about this a little bit last night. They're having one horse open sleigh rides, visits with Santa on, the tw on Saturday and Sunday. So you're going to have sleigh rides and hors d'oeuvres. What's an hors d'oeuvre? Like finger food snacks, oh. but only upscale. So you have to hold a pinky oh. out. Yes, yeah, that correct. Yes, so <clears throat> as you have an hors d'oeuvre, yes, with Santa in the sleigh. Which we think is going to be a fun, really a fun, cool thing. Um, something new on the top of the hill. The new Bear Valley Pizza Company will be opening up this weekend as well. Headwaters, the um, very nice restaurant there, will be opening up to a starting full menu starting tomorrow night. Uh, so basically the, the year, the really full ski season year starts up uh, this weekend. So come on up and play. Um, it is and it's a one way that you can, in a fun and exciting way, you can come up and play and actually help the local economy, support the local businesses. We'd like to thank Granger for joining us tonight, talking a little bit about the stuff. Come on, have a great weekend, and we'll see you out there this weekend, and have a good night. Good night. Bye.